Hi guys, thanks for joining me. Today we're gonna to be cooking over an ingenious open fire cooking system. It's a fire rack that hovers. Keep watching to find out exactly how it works. Wow, first try. Check that out. All we're doing is throwing it on the hook. Haha, -ha, there we go. Now we can adjust it up, up, and we can adjust it down, down, Now if I pull carefully, those bones are going to pull out very nicely. One by one by one by one. Nothing on that fish was wasted. My shelter is really gonna improve with this stuff I ripped off the other dude. He's gonna be pissed. Looks pretty good, huh? Let's go test it out. I like it. Those are my beardsicles. People think beards insulate. They only insulate until you get beardsicles. All right guys, thanks for joining me again. We got a lot of work. I gotta make some improvements on the shelter. I'm not liking how that snow keeps piling up inside the lean-to, so we gotta do something about it, and I have an idea. Plus, I've got a bunch of stuff with me. A whole bunch of gear. I got some subscriber gear that people have sent to me, and uh, I wanna put it to use. It's really neat. You're gonna like it. Stick with me. The first thing I want to do, because my lean-to, um, well it's a lean-to, so the front is exposed and every time it snows, snow gets inside the lean-to, which I don't like because every time I have to come, I come here, I have to clean that out. And uh, you know, if it rains, the same thing is going to happen, but obviously when the wind blows, the snow comes in. So what I want to do is I want to make a tent style uh, with a door in the front so that I can enclose it. And then I won't have that problem of all that snow accumulating inside. So as you know, I'm a big fan of my Boreal 21 foldable packable saw. Clicks into place and we're in business. So what I'm gonna do is collect a bunch of cedar. There's tons of cedar here. There's lots of dead standing cedar as well. I'll mostly use that. It doesn't have to be strong. Uh, I'm gonna get two live cedar for the door opening and I'm um, hopefully gonna be able to make a door today. If I don't have enough time, it'll be a project for another one. But uh, my main thing is enclosing it. I also wanna beef up my bedding. Um, I have a little bit more spruce over here. Uh, I can go grab some more grass out in the open area as well. So I'll be doing that. And as mentioned, I have lots of subscriber gear. I have a, a grill you're gonna really like to see. It's something that I've wanted for a long time. And a subscriber said, hey, I'll send you one. So I said, okay, sure, why not? Um, it'll replace my old style grill, which I'll show you as well. I've got a bunch of food. I've got some trout I caught up north ice fishing. I'm going to cook those today with some maple syrup and some soy sauce. It's a little bit of a special concoction. We're going to hopefully cook that over the fire with the cooking system. 
All right, let's go. We got to get to work. We got to get this structure built and we got to get a fire going. There's lots of stuff to do. Sure, there's a lot of tracks out here. These look like coyote tracks to me. Right behind my shelter. Scary stuff. Really scary. I'm just kidding. I don't really worry about coyote. They're pretty small. I could take them with a knife, honestly. They're uh, solo, pretty much. They don't, they're not pack hunters. They're very small animals. And uh, they're really not a worry at all. Uh, I never heard of a coy anybody getting killed by a coyote, but I'm, I'm sure it's possible under the right conditions. Be my measuring stick. I've just made the door as wide as my shoulders, no more. And once I cover this up, it's gonna be a tent. So I'll be able to come in and be completely closed off. Hoping I have enough spruce to cover this up though. That's about as big as you want for survival shelter. You do not have to make a big one. Um, just enough to get out of the wind and uh, minimal materials possible. This still took me three days to build, so it's not an insignificant commitment. Uh, it would be a lot more difficult to do without food, but thankfully, as you know, I've been bringing wild food out with me to supplement building. Uh, without food, it would be so much harder. And to keep up uh, building as well as hunting and fishing, virtually impossible. So last time I was out, I made a little pile here of what was left of the spruce. You can see this tree's pretty much picked clean. I think I'll, I'll saw off the end here and I'll drag that back to camp and then I'll be able to grab sort of what's hidden under the snow. But for now, it's this pile here. 
it's not an insignificant pile. Uh, it'll get me going anyway. So let's unbury this. You see how much it snowed just the last few days. And get the snow off here and we'll bring it back to camp. Well, just like I figured, not enough. So let's cut the top off of that tree and see how much we can get off that. Otherwise, we're gonna have to go scavenge. Uh, no two ways about it. Just, you can see how much spruce is required to make a shelter this size. It's a small shelter, but it's taken an entire tree. This tree had fallen down this fall, and thankfully, because it froze, it didn't, uh, all the leaves and needles didn't fall off. Uh, so it preserved, but uh, you could see how if you were to make a shelter like this, you got to count on it, probably at least two good trees, full trees, or a bunch of tree bottoms. Some of you guys have suggested that my 100 year old axe, which I found in the wall of a 100 year old building, was a murder weapon. Boy, you guys are dark. Real dark. My mind didn't even go there. And I've killed lots of animals and eaten them too. But as far as killing people, sorry man, that's where I stop. That was supposed to stick in, but it's not a chopping axe, is it? Oh well, I'll just leave it there. Oh, it's nice and spacious in here for one person. Not two, well, too comfortable, too cozy, too intimate, intimate. Two people want to be intimate, this is the perfect one. Anybody want to be intimate? So I'm happy with that, although it could use a little bit more reinforcement. It also could use a door. That would be kind of neat. Kind of cool if there was an awning too, but maybe that's for another time. Maybe the door's for another time too. I gotta get a fire and I'm getting hungry. But I am going to commit to getting some more bedding because the bedding doesn't come all the way to the front anymore. And there's lots of snow here in the front too that I don't like so much. So if I start a fire, that's gonna to start to melt in here. So I'm gonna go collect a little bit more bedding and then fire and maybe while we're doing the fire, we can uh, maybe do the door, not sure yet. But uh, I do have a special way of cooking today and it's gonna take a little bit of time to set up. And uh, of course the fire always takes a couple hours to get going and burn down. And uh, I, ha I can't make the fire right here anymore. Seeing as how the shelter reaches out so far. So I'm going to have to back that up a bit. So yeah, there's a few things left to do. But it's becoming like a home out here after I've spent, you know, I think this is my fourth trip out. 
and uh, I've got all my tools. I've got my little mortar, my big mortar and pestle, I should say. Uh, I could use a little bench to sit on. That would be nice. I've got my rocks for cooking. I'm going to make a tripod, so that's a hint as far as how I'm going to cook it. I've got a fire rack. You guys know that already. You're going to be really cool. It's really cool. I got it's a really good setup. Uh, there's two, actually two subscribers who sent me different things at different times. And I'm going to com combine the two to make a really cool uh, cooking method and then later on I'm going to get another one so I'm still waiting on the other element but it's coming. All right let's go let's go hunt down some more spruce and some bedding. So bizarre I put this uh, goat out three four weeks ago and uh, all I managed to get on it was the fox and I'm thinking the fox just came out here because I skinned the fox out here the other fox or or maybe it's just the ghost of the fox that came back weird huh I've actually never seen a fox or had a fox on trail camera ever so definitely having that skinning that fox out out here had a big effect drawing in the next one but this uh this goat's been hanging here with the with the gut pile for for th four weeks now, and uh, it hasn't been hit. So I took the trail camera off anyway, and uh, now I'm just monitoring for tracks, and there's nothing. So if you guys have an explanation as to why, you know, nothing's coming in, no no coyote are coming in. There was tracks all over the place, and there's nothing coming into the to the actual gut pile. My guess is it's just because it's frozen, and uh, coyote can't eat it because it's frozen. That's my only guess. I don't have anything else. Um, like I say, I know they're around, but they're just not coming in. So if it just can't tear off pieces of it anymore and they don't want to work for it, or there's a better food source someplace else, or maybe just that there aren't any foxes, or a coyote, I should say, in the neighborhood. Um, so, you know, they're not traveling a big distance to come and get this, this uh, what's left of this, this kill. So that's all I got, man. But uh, off over here, see if we can find some spruce. I wasn't expecting to find this. Looks like some hobo has been living out here. Some dollar store hack, obviously. Who sleeps under a tarp when you have all this beautiful renewable resources to build with? What a shame. Some guy leaves his tarp out here. Homeless guy, obviously. I have to admit, he's got a bit of skills. He's got a decent ridge pole. It held up all that snow. And his bedding's nice and dry, so obviously I'm going to take it. I mean, who wouldn't? I'm gonna leave this here so some hobo comes back. I'm gonna take his bedding for sure. Boy, my shelter is really gonna improve with this stuff I ripped off the other dude. He's gonna be pissed.
Looks pretty good, huh? Let's go test it out. I like it. So if the overall theme of this bush camp, bush crapping camp, bush craft, bush craft. This is bush craft, we can admit. Usually I would just do bush crap. Like a stick is a spoon, a stick is a fork. But this is like real bush craft. Like I actually crafted something out of the bush. Legit. So we can call this bushcraft. So if you haven't caught on to the theme of this camp, it's basically build and bake. We've been cooking out here and I've been doing it in different ways, different styles of cooking. Uh, up until now it's been primitive style, more or less. Uh, this time I'm gonna do a modern style of cooking. So I've got modern equipment, uh, modern pots, but Today I'm going to do full blown sheet, modern equipment, you know, to the tens. So this would be something that you would carry with you, you know, if you didn't want to do a quote unquote survival challenge. This would just be, you know, you want to go out in the woods and have actually, actually have a good time and not mess around too much. I mean, for this, you'd pitch a tent, right? But uh, I'm messing around. I'm having fun out here. So the next one I need to get is uh, I need to get tripod. So I'm going to get some. Uh, live cedar because I want these to last a long time so triple leg tripod and then we're gonna whip out the secret item for today from the subscriber so hang on let's go get ourselves a tripod we'll rig that up and then we'll move on to the reveal are you excited I was and I was even more excited when I tested it out yesterday Oh hey, tripod up. Let's do the big reveal. Those my beard sickles. People think beards insulate. They only insulate until you get beard sickles. If it builds up, it's hard to move your chin muscles. So a while ago I made a video, you know, when I was a nobody on YouTube, I made a video about how to make a nobody grill. If you didn't have any money, some of you guys out there are still nobodies, but one day you'll become somebody to keep working at it, even if only on a small scale. And there's nothing wrong with that. You'd be somebody in your own community is fine by me. Here's the grill I made a while ago. This is a piece of metal preformed that used to be inside of a stove. I got this from a scrap metal yard uh, in our neck of the woods you can actually just grab them drive by pull up to the scrap metal place before they get loaded inside and grab the grill right out or you could put some in your want ads uh, we use Kijiji it's uh, online classified ads I just said I want some grills and uh, I actually got four or five at the same time because somebody else was looking on a project to make a fire grill that they never got around to doing so all you would do here is you want to find one that has the right width and then you just cut the ends off and that makes yourself a nice fire grill. Get a uh, file and file the edges down so that it doesn't catch. And uh, there's another video, so I'm not going to talk too much about that. Um, but there is a grill I've wanted for a very, very long time. Uh, you may have heard of it. It's called the Purcell Trench Grill. Here it is. Fancy schmancy. So this was actually given to me by a subscriber who uh, likes the grill himself and uh, likes it so much he wanted me to use it and advertise for the company. So it's, it's called, um, this is the Voyageurs Grill. They have a couple different kinds. Packable Outdoor Cooking Grill, Purcell Trench, uh, made in Washington, USA. Comes in a nice carrying case. My carrying case is not nice. It's actually just a pant leg. It is a very well-made grill. You can see the edges are super duper smooth. They won't catch on anything, not even my fingertip. So smooth. I added these little things here because it's gonna be part of a different system to be used with the tripod. So the Purcell Trench, man, 
they've got like a lifetime warranty on this or something crazy like that. Uh, I've got like a handwritten note I want to read to you, but uh, it's a great overall grill. It's super duper duper light. I mean, this one's probably about twice as heavy. And uh, if you think this isn't durable, it's because I actually ran it over with a car. <laughs> Funny story. I had my backpack at, behind my car and I backed up over top of it. So it's not warping for that reason. But this one here is like, I think it's guaranteed not to warp. It's got a whole bunch of things guaranteed not to rust. I mean, it's like super well made. So that's the Purcell Trench. I want to open the letter here because I do owe a thank you to my subscriber. And this, sorry, this has been a long time coming. I did want to use, I want to use all the stuff that you guys send me right away, but. I'm on a schedule about three weeks in advance, sometimes longer when I have to find a way to fit this stuff in. So, uh, so shout out from Josh from uh, Josh from Wisconsin is uh, is the person who bought the grill for me uh, on behalf of uh, himself through the company, uh, Don Don Tryon. This guy who wrote me the letter. Um, it came from the Purcell Trench office, right from headquarters. And he wrote a handwritten, uh, handwritten note here at the bottom. He says, good on you guys teaching backcountry skills. Thanks to Josh for ordering it for you. Generous guy. The grill does, not, uh, does need a break in fire or so. Then should be your companion for the duration. Thanks, Don. So, I mean, that speaks to the company, right? It's a, uh, you know, grassroots kind of deal. And when you're ordering from them, you're ordering directly from them for a product that they stand by. So my other subscriber, Jared Fenwick, he uh, is a bit of an entrepreneur. He's produced a different product um, that will help complement what I'm cooking with today. I haven't got the whole set from him. Uh, he, he goes under the, the uh, screen name Nomadic Oasis. He posts uh, comments every once in a while, has a little bit of a YouTube channel, so I'll link that up down at the bottom. Um, but he sent a device that he's been working on for a while. It's a pot hook uh, of sorts, but it's adjustable and he calls it he has a little fishy thing that he calls it but it's meant to boil water and uh, and hang cast iron pots and etc from a tripod. Now I'm not sure if he's gonna market the uh, heavy duty version of this, but he is looking at uh, potentially marketing the fishy thing, but the fishy thing is coming next. I don't have that yet. So I want to show you the device. So again, this is the this is the product that I don't think he will be marketing, um, but it's what it's what I'll be using today. He sent it to me. I guess it's a prototype, but uh, I'm not sure if he can um, if he's aiming to market it because he's he's looking at something that will work in third world country. But a lot it works along the same principle. His fishy thing will actually just fit inside a water bottle for for purification. But you can see there's a hook at the bottom and there's a hook at the top um, and you can hook your pot down on the bottom here. So basically the fishy thing is this device here. So you hang this up from your tripod. Uh, it's hard to demonstrate without using all my hands. But anyway, this slides up and down so you can raise and lower your pot without raising and lowering your tripod. Basically your pot, tripod stays sta standing still and then when you want to raise it and lower it, you just do it and then it sits in place. So it's not working correctly because obviously this needs to be hung. So I'm going to hang this up right now and I'm going to show you how I have this rigged up. So I came up with my own little design to go and complement this entire rig. This is just a basic chain. Um, I have an S hook at the top and uh, I've looped them all around here. So you don't have to pay too much attention to that. And these would open up. So at the bottom I've got little hooks as part of the chain and these are going to hook onto the grill hook onto the other rig and that's going to hook up to the tripod so it's going to be an entire cooking system that's adjustable how fancy schmancy is that so this might be a slightly tricky i love when the chickadees come to visit me anyway so this might be slightly tricky to set up but we will get it so it's got four connections and these are going to be probably slightly mixed up because they've been kind of rattling around in my bag. Well, you never know I might get it just right the first time so all I'm doing is oh, tickety, hooking those four up 
And then without them coming detached, we're gonna grab the S hook at the top and see how we did. Wow, first try. Check that out. So that, my friends, is a basket and we're gonna hook that up to the adjustable fishy thing and we're gonna have a whole grill cooking system that's adjustable for temperature. That's why we wanna adjust it. We can move it up and down as the heat from the fire increases and decreases. How do you like that? So first step first, we're gonna hook up the, the fishy thing bit here. So that's just basically cord, cordage. And we wanna get the relative height right. So you can see now, once we get some weight on there, all we gotta do is just adjust it and it stays. All we're doing is throwing it on the hook. Haha, -ha, there we go. Now we can adjust it up, up, and we can adjust it down, down, down. So how do we like that height? We're cooking really low on a super small fire. Ideal in the summer. You want just a little tiny fire and you can, oh man, you can put it on and off, move the legs out if you want to move it away from the fire, sort of left and right kind of deal. But the best thing about this is there's no rocks in the way here, so you can feed it perfectly. You can shove the coals over, you can have a fire going over here, shove the coals underneath. But look at that, man. I mean, how simple. And the adjustment on this is great. Beauty. And let's get a fire going cook yourself some food because I'm getting hungry. Since we're doing a different style of cooking today, we can cheat. I brought some cutlery, real legit cutlery, and even a mug. I have one, two, three, four, five tiny trout I caught ice fishing. I have some maple syrup, some pin cherry jam I made a long time ago. Basically, pink cherry jam, all you do is mash it up, add sugar, caramelize it, good to go, that's it. Maple syrup I made from this actual property too. Basically, same thing, collect maple sap, boil it down till you get the right consistency, and uh, you've got yourself maple syrup. So, that's gonna come in handy for the trout. Hang on, I got more. Maple sugar. Maple sugar is the process which ensues after you go past the maple syrup stage. So you boil it a little bit more without burning it, take it off the heat, 
stir it around real fast, get rid of the, the remaining moisture, and you end up with what is the consistency of maple or uh, brown sugar. But it's maple flavored. Really good stuff and a lot more storable than this stuff. The liquid version will spoil outside of the refrigeration or freeze. This lasts forever. Well, almost forever. It'll last as long as a uh, refined sugar. We got more. I have garlic. That came from my own home garden. We're making a meal here, guys. I have rendered goat fat. Yeah, man. <sighs> Smells like regular old lard. So this was easy. All I did was take the fattiest parts, cook it on the stove until, um, you know, the fat boiled out of it. And then I filtered it through a paper towel and what you get left is oil. And then once it cools, it turns into a kind of a lard type texture. Again, we're making something with all this guys. Keep, keep watching, there's more. This beautiful, bright orange pudding like consistency is pumpkin. So all I did for this is I boiled it skin on in water until it was soft enough I could remove the skin and then I threw it in the blender and you end up with this delicious concoction. Okay, so maybe you can kind of figure out what's going, what's going on here. Some garlic salt, pumpkin spice, and I've got some um, massive flour, corn flour. So this is in line with how Native Americans would have eaten around here. So they're using these kinds of ingredients. The garlic would probably fall into here and the pumpkin spice would have been something they had to trade wide for. A mass of flour is a different kind of flour, just a different kind of process to get through there. But the masa, the masa would have come from corn, Native American corn. This style I had, uh, I harvested from this property as well. I dried it uh, just in the house as per normal. This, so this corn is so beautiful so brightly colored you can see those beautiful kernels i haven't decided what to do with it so i'm hoping you guys can come up with an idea of what i should do with it i could throw it in the giant mortar and pestle i could just also replant it and get some more corn next year but uh i love having this in my house it's so it just reminds me of you know a time that's gone past look at those kernels so brightly colored and perfectly dried right on the right on the cob so i've been keeping this around you guys got ideas for this let me know for now, I'm gonna take this home. But I did wanna show it to you. I'm gonna hang it up here just for decoration. So one last ingredient, soy sauce. So let's pair things up here. We're gonna go pumpkin spice with the pumpkin, with the maple sugar. That's gonna make like a pumpkin soup or pie. The corn, the massa corn, we can make into a some cakes if we want to, I'm not sure. And that will be paired up with the pin, uh, pin cherry syrup, um, syrup or jam. The trout will get garnished with goat fat, rendered goat fat. Now if we didn't have goat fat, obviously we would use uh, bear fat. That would be something more traditionally native to this environment. And we'll add some garlic uh, salt and garlic cloves with the foreign ingredient soy sauce. And then we'll drizzle on top maple syrup. But obviously a lot of external effort has gone into where we're at now. I mean the goat fat took a, you know, a couple, about an hour to simmer. This, the uh, maple, maple sugar took, you know, days and days to do. The pumpkin took a whole season to grow. The trout took a day to, to collect. The maple, the maple syrup, same kind of deal. The pin cherry to collect and process. I mean, this is a lot of processing, but that's what people are famous for. We are famous for our ability to render down ingredients to the rawest, most digestible form. And then we throw it on the heat and cook it for one last time. And we're, we're into for some really special um, and really delicious and easy to digest and very nourishing meals.
very good. It's times like this you wish I had a plate. But I need this frying pan for the fish. So that's the soy sauce, maple, maple syrup, garlic. Need some goat fat in there for sure. Ooh, how about that for a catch? Whew. How much goat fat should we put in there? Probably about that much. I'm gonna throw this on top. <clears throat> oh boy. Oh boy. Now if I cook these properly, <clears throat> I'll be able to take the bones right out. If I don't cook it properly, I'll be wrestling with the rib cage bones all day long. So I don't want to overcook it. There's a lot of heat coming off here. You can see I'm probably about two and a half feet, two feet minimum above the, the fire level. So having it adjustable is a huge asset. You mean, I could never pile rocks up this, well, I could, but it, piling rocks up this high is crazy. To get this grill up that high. Before you decide to take off, I have a reader comment I wanna share. As you know, I, re I read another one and <laughs> I kinda lost it. And actually, this reader comment gave me the same feeling and I didn't read it out loud but I will read it out loud to you guys because I think it's, uh, it's an important message to, to continue to share. There's a specific way to clean or to prepare a trout for eating. You know, we take the backbone out, you pitch it, you don't need that. And then there's a lateral line down the middle of the fish. So if you split it down the lateral line and this is a whole trout just gutted, that's it, nothing else. Then take your knife and move it from the top or from the middle to the top, the middle to the backbone, and that will separate. And what you're gonna do is leave all the bones at the back and you're gonna end up with a nice piece of meat that has no bones in it. Oh man, my mouth's watering. You're gonna dunk it in the soy sauce, maple sugar, garlic. Oh, that's fantastic. This is like pumpkin pie soup, pumpkin soup. Um, man, is it good. And it actually, if you wanna save all the effort but still have the you know, pumpkin pie. Do the same thing. All the same ingredients. Just, just wing it. You can, you can be picky about measuring, but just wing it. Throw a couple eggs in there, and then uh, parchment paper in a baking dish. It cooks like pumpkin pie. The egg will form a matrix and solidify everything. And man, is it good as a pumpkin pie too? But this is like liquid pumpkin pie. It's like pumpkin soup, but thicker. It's like a meal. Oh, my eyes get red when I get smoky. So you can see, there's nothing on this trout that's gonna go to waste. Now if I pull carefully, those bones are going to pull out very nicely. One by one by one by one. That's it. 100% bone free. Nothing on that fish was wasted. 100% consumed. You know, when you talk about calories 
recovered. This is a meal in which calories have been recovered. Look at that. It's like pumpkin pie. Pumpkin pie in a cup. Oh. All right, guys, I promised you a reader question, a reader comment. I like, I picked this one out because again, it made me, I don't know, it just made me proud. It made me proud to inspire some people to get back and do things. Um, you only live one time. And for some of us, out there that one time we have to live is uh not a very pleasant one you know compared to everybody else so there's lots of people who you know they got dealt a bad hand put it that way they have an illness they have an injury or chronic pain and it stops them from from going out and doing the things that they might do ordinarily. But then there's other people out there who are just completely wasting it. And instead of drawing attention to, I mean, people that are wasting it, let's talk about what we can do. I mean, any situation you get in, think about survival. There's some things you can't do and there's things you can't control but there are things that you can control. So when you get dealt a bad hand, do you just flip the table and walk away? And that's something I teach my son not to do. I've taught him how to be a good loser because you're gonna lose a lot more than you're gonna win in life. And thankfully we live in a world where you're able to fail as many times as you want. And if you win once and it's a big hand, you can be very successful for the rest of your life. So the important thing is, is to be a good loser and then harness that pain and misery from losing and turn it into some way of winning. And maybe your scale of winning is gonna be smaller than somebody else's scale of winning but that doesn't mean you shouldn't try. That doesn't mean you shouldn't try your version of winning. So guys, don't waste what you've been given. You have been given something. And if you look around long enough, you'll find somebody who's got it worse than you do. And then you'll find somebody who's got it worse than you do, but is doing better than you. And is maximizing their ability to get things done to live their life to maximum benefit and value. So don't waste it. So Craig writes, I'm gonna hold it together. I'm gonna do my best here. This, this talk struck a nerve with me, man. I love it. I am in a wheelchair and I've had chronic health problems for years and I let myself go to 420 pounds. And when I realized I was over letting my life pass me by, I, just thought, I decided to stop letting my health control me. I just turned 30 and I've lost 30 pounds. And in two days, I will be a year since I drank a soda. I was up to six a day and stopped cold turkey. And I have changed my diet to no more than 1400 calories for my doctor so I can make sure I'm still getting enough to keep my health and nutrients up and only eating meat I've killed or fish I've caught. It's given me the excuse I need to go out and grocery shop like a man. I want to hunt and fish every state and a few countries. I went to Oregon for my uncle's funeral and ended up with sores on my feet from pressure. And the old me would have stayed in bed with, with it up and let myself get depressed. But I just spent three days of hard hunting for coyote, and while I didn't even see one, it was totally worth it. I'm taking a few days to rest my foot and keep it up because it's infected, 
but I'm on antibiotics, so soon the swelling goes down, I'm going to be back out. Especially because there's a local rancher who lost three calves to coyote the other night, so I'm targeting those. My mom, who was really cautious, said I shouldn't get, I shouldn't go this last weekend, but I told her I have to go and live my life. I can rest after I'm done hunting, but it gets so bad that going hunting or fishing kills me. Then it was my time because I can't live how I want to live alive. Pulse or no pulse, I may have ended up with an infection, but I caught it early and had three days of great hunting with close buddies. And if I have to take a day or two on my bed with my foot up, so be it. So I don't know how he ended up in a wheelchair, if it was just from overeating or if it's some other health related problem. Uh, but I commend you for taking steps to turn your life around. I mean, naturally, people suffer from all, all kinds of conditions. And it's easy for us to shrink and lose our ability to do anything. It's easy for us to give up. I want to share a story, but today's not the time, of when I shrank, when my life shrank, when I shrank as a person, and what I did to turn myself around. Now, it's not a, it's not a major health crisis. It was more a human development, time of life, you know, raising kids, having a family, or raising a kid, I should say, and having a family, and how I wasn't able to do all the things that made me feel well and made me grow as a person instead of having me shrink. And as a result, I had developed unexplained and chronic pain through various parts of my body. And I started to believe that I was quite literally falling apart. And uh, I had lots of excuses on some medication I had taken when I was a teenager for acne. Uh, I shouldn't have taken that, but you know, at one point in time I developed lots of pain and I thought because I'd, it had been something I had done before and I couldn't control it. But uh, that wasn't the case. And I just decided pain or no pain, I have to get myself back together because this isn't working and I'm setting a bad example for my son and I'm setting a, I'm just doing a bad job living my life and I'm wasting it. So since then, I put this channel out and it's it's pushing me, you know, out of my wheelchair, so to speak, and, and into the world. And it's making me so much stronger, you can't believe. So thank you for your story. And just because I pointed this one out doesn't mean that everybody who shared a story doesn't deserve a mention so I'm talking to you guys anybody who's out there who's turned their life around you know maybe you need to hear it from somebody else but you know I'm really proud of you guys I'm proud of all the kids out there who's sharing their stories and taking charge of their life again and I, I want you to keep doing that and you know even if it's just to write it down someplace as a way so that we can you know track your progress and be committed to it and i want i hope you guys that that you just because you left it someplace doesn't mean you feel accomplished you need to take steps every day toward your goal every day and i don't care how small those steps are but every day has to include some kind of progress toward your goal you know people wonder how we developed all these skills, these bush and woodsman's skills. It was small steps over decades of time. And it culminates into an overall skill set. But that happens by thinking about what you want to learn and then taking steps to do it. So, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. I'm not going to drag it on any further. Uh, let me know what you think I should do with that corn. I'm kind of attached to it now. I like to have it in my house as decoration. It reminds me of 
a time gone past but if you can come up with a better idea for it i'll hear it i'll hear you out on it um yeah i'm gonna eat the rest of my food here and, and pack up and, and take off and uh, there's always another adventure guys i've got lots of stuff planned so stick around keep sharing keep sharing your thoughts and keep uh keep watching the videos and please go out and use some of the knowledge you've gained from them well guys if you know me i'm always up to new things and uh, i like to have fun with my videos uh, you guys did really well on the old easter egg hunt uh, where i gave away a boreal 21 saw um, i think it was too easy you guys found it right away um, if you haven't found it you can go back and look it's in the uh geez the hair snaring video you can go back and look at that but i've i've left another one in here but this one's a little bit different it's not a standard type of easter egg it's not like uh you know i've added something to the video that doesn't belong this one is uh you can call it a plot flaw um a plot flaw is when there's a break in the continuity of the video um so uh try not to give any spoilers away and uh, I know it's funny, I put this at the end of the video, so you guys have to go back and look for it. But hey, you know, it's going to go to somebody who's dedicated at least. And, uh, you know, I'd like to give away another saw if I can. So we'll see if uh, Boreal 21 is going to put one up. But uh, yeah, okay, so here's the deal. Um, uh, inconsistency in the plot. Um, it's something that belongs, but... Uh, Jeez, what's a plot flaw? It's not an Easter egg. It's not like I added something extra. It's just like, it's an inconsistency. So there would be something you'd be like, okay, it's, it's not going to be fairly obvious. It's going to be like, um, geez, man, how do you describe it? I'm, I'm suffering here. You guys look up plot flaw and you know when you're watching a movie and you're like, all of a sudden there's something in the picture that wasn't there before. So you're like, oh man, that didn't work because, you know, that dude wasn't there before or... There's an extra thing or the guy's hair's combed the wrong way or um, he's wearing a different shirt uh, than he was like in the previous scene. So there's going to be something in the picture that that didn't, that wasn't consistent, put it that way. So, you know, it was there, it was in the scene and then all of a sudden there was something that, that was, that is different. I'm doing a terrible job explaining this. <laughs> anyway. Anyway, good luck to you guys. I hope you can figure it out. It's Boreal 21. I'm packing down, so this is going to go away. I am giving you guys a big hand here, too. Okay, so Boreal 21 again. Good saw. I really like it. So this is the big hint. Good luck, guys. Cheers.